Hey everybody, um, before we get into this podcast episode, which is going to be about rainbow baiting, uh, rainbow capitalism, everything like that, I want to talk about something um, hard, something but hard but important that happened in our community. Um, someone who was part of our local queer community, David Gomez, was recently assaulted for being queer, and this happened this past weekend on Saturday at Toronto Island on Hanlon's Point, and he was so brutally attacked that he ended up in the hospital. He almost died. Um, he had to go into surgery, and I think it's really important that we all stand with him as part of our community. This is so fucked up. <laughs> it's so fucked up that this happened. Um, it it honestly really hit us hard because this isn't something that you think of as happening in Toronto. Yeah. You know, you don't picture someone getting attacked because they're queer. Yeah. Like I I I don't picture that happening, but it does. Clearly it does. And um something really important was pointed out that they were at Hanlon's Point, which is on the island, and that is a historically queer part of the island, a historically queer part of the beach. And in the 1970s, um, before the whole Pride Parade started really happening, that is where a lot of queer celebrations would happen. And just like symbolically, it's messed up during Pride Month in that part of the beach, that is where he was attacked. And in a I'm going to sort of tag to other parts of the story mm -hmm. from other people, but I kind of wanted to read a message that David Gomez put out and then also talk about who attacked him. Yeah. So David said, I'm going to put it up as well, but he said, happy pride last night on my way home from the breach, a group of men decided to poke some fun at me by following me around and calling me faggot in homo. Subsequently, I was knocked unconscious and beaten nearly to death. I was dragged around, kicked, and punched in the face. I now have a broken nose with a shattered face, multiple lacerations across my body, a broken tooth. Oh, and I also have a slight fracture on my right hip, all thanks to those strangers. So this still happens, and I don't think that we should be standing for this. It hasn't hit mainstream media yet, and it is really important that we keep reposting this, resharing this, and also supporting David in his recovery. He is a part of our community and we can't let a situation like this go unnoticed. That's not okay. It's not okay. Yeah. And it was recently discovered by how people were, his friends were sharing it online and our community was sharing it around and trying to figure out who attacked him, that it was someone who was in the CFL. And his name is Chris Larson. He's a defensive lineman. As we are talking about rainbow capitalism, CFL is a company who has slapped a pride flag on their logo. So let's tag the CFL in as many of these posts as we're making. Tag the CFL and tag all of the news corporations, the local news corporations that you know, because this is something that's really important to be spreading. We cannot let things like this slide under the table. That's not okay. And we have lost so many of our queer spaces due to the pandemic. And it is so important that we preserve these spaces and we protect each other. So okay. I'm also going to link David's GoFundMe to help with his recovery as well. So turn out for your community. Yeah, we appreciate you. And enjoy the episode. Ooh. Hey, demons. It's me, <laughs> your boy. Welcome back to the Queer Collective Podcast. My name's Emily. And my name is Carbon. <laughs> Welcome. What a do, baby. What a do, baby. So, today on the podcast, yes, I have an important topic that I want to talk about. Okay. This is a public service announcement. Emily has a topic. <laughs> Go on. It's going to be a long public service announcement. Some would call it a conversation uh, in the form of a podcast. Would they really? I think that, yeah. So like <laughs> anywhere between 25 minutes to, to three hours. Oh, three hours is a long time. It won't be that long. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sit tight. <laughs> so what we're going to be talking about today, it comes in many different forms and goes by many different names. Um, some may call it rainbow capitalism. Some may call it pink washing some might call it 
rainbow, rainbow baiting. Yeah, rainbow baiting. There you go. Yeah. Just stole the words right out of my mouth. I just got them. Scratched them. <laughs> and then I put them in mine. <laughs> Thank Wait, you. That sounded weird. Yeah, a bit weird, but that's all right. Okay. <laughs> so this is an important topic for us to chat about, especially during Pride Month when all of these companies are replacing their logos with rainbow. rainbows. Yeah, yeah, with rainbows. And decorating everywhere in rainbows, all of their businesses that are in uh, liberal areas. <laughs> <laughs> T. Yeah. T. Yeah. Uh, yes, I do see that. I see that everywhere now. Mm. But only for the month of June. Yeah. How strange. Yeah. So if some of you don't know what we're talking <laughs> about, um, pink washing, rainbow baiting, rainbow capitalism, all of this is essentially just companies using queer issues, queer topics, and spinning it in a positive way and using it basically to advertise themselves to the queer community. Mm -hmm. You know, make themselves look positive and also just like fixing their brand image just by slapping a rainbow on something without actually doing anything meaningful for the community or giving anything back mm -hmm. or changing the way that their business operates to be more welcoming to yeah. queer employees. Yeah, that's key um, because there is definitely a difference between a company that puts a rainbow on and also gives back to the community, uh, distributes resources and funding and all these different things and does something that's actually meaningful for the community that they're trying to represent or not represent necessarily, but mm -hmm. uh, amplify or empower by putting the rainbow on for the month of yeah. uh, pride. However, mm -hmm. there's so many companies out there that change, per, for example, maybe they'll change their Instagram mm -hmm. logo to something with a rainbow on it. Yeah. They're, they'll change their logo to rainbows for just the month. Um, and that's all they do. They don't do anything else. And they're like, yeah, we're good people. Yeah. You know, that's sickening to me and not in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So my first question for you is. Oh, for moi. Yeah. Oh, wow. Thank you. What do you think of like pink washing and at what point is a company pink washing and what point are they? Is it genuine? Mm. That's a great question because there's so it's not black and white. No. Uh, or at least I don't see it that way. There's a lot of gray area there. There's also uh, you could say like not necessarily levels, but there's like you know, a, a scale or a gradient mm -hmm. on so. which you fall upon. So I would say that like the lowest level would be like literally just slapping a rainbow on. Mm -hmm. And that's the most disingenuous that you can get, right? Uh, aside from not slapping a rainbow on at all. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> but honestly, is, it, is that better? I think that's even, yeah. I would prefer that they didn't slap the rainbow logo on at all if they're not going to do anything. That's a yeah. I was going to say like I think I take back my words it's because it's so meaningless. It's even worse because yeah. you're just pretending to be something you're not, which is worse than just embracing who you're not. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think the lowest level is just putting a rainbow on and then doing nothing else. That's yeah. like so disingenuous that is disgusting and Going along the gradient, there's many different things that you can do in between, yeah. such as, for example, maybe you put on a pride event or maybe you um, fund a local organization. Mm. Uh, you do something, right? Yeah. There's many different things that you can do. There's not one correct thing versus an incorrect thing when it comes to action i think mm. but we can get into that a little bit i personally think there's some incorrect things that yeah? companies can do please do tell you i think yeah. you're way more versed in this than i am mm, thank you <laughs> <laughs> so me personally i think aside from just slapping a rainbow logo on and doing nothing i think the worst thing you can do is take up too much space mm. you know like do tell yeah. explain that a little bit i think we've all noticed in like the last few pride parades that we've been able to attend because of the pandemic we haven't been able to the last like this year and the year before mm -hmm. but the parade has been taken over by corporations like right. the whole parade is basically just like a walking advertisement like there's yeah. a lot of companies that come in and they'll take up five minutes of the whole parade by just inviting all of their employees to walk down the thing they have it like completely branded 
pride float and like yeah. you can tell that they put a lot of money into this yeah you know like they're things are popping off like there's confetti there's all of this there's all that right like, they spent a lot of money on this pride float but i'm i don't know to me it's that's just taking up space at something that is supposed to be celebrating queer people right. instead you've turned it into your own advertisement these companies that are doing this are putting on queer programming and are making their workplaces safer for queer people like i i know that but i feel like doing this is almost the worst thing that you could do in my opinion taking up the whole parade like that in my mind why don't you spend that money donate it to a local queer organization like queer collective like the 519 519 yeah. exactly and or sponsor them to put a float on and slap your yeah. logo on their float dude Okay, that to me would be like, okay, you're actually trying to do something yes. cool. Like, say, for example, someone, a big corporation, sponsored Queer Collective to make their own float, right? And their only requirement was just have our logo at, like, the bottom right-hand corner or something. Mm. Bring whoever you want to bring on. Yeah. Here's the money. Like, make it, like, everything that you want it to be and actually celebrate real, like, queer people, mm -hmm. like, you know, going through it. Yeah. And that that to me mm -hmm. is a great idea. Not that the employees at these corporations are not allowed to be yeah. on it or allowed to be a part of it. Not at all. Yeah. Like, I think it should be more of like, let's collaborate mm -hmm. on like with someone who's actually like doing grassroots type of work yeah. and make something cool happen yeah. rather than like, let's take up space in the parade, build our giant float with our logo all over everywhere on mm -hmm. the float, on the T-shirts that the employees are wearing, on the things that they're handing out, like yeah. whether it's a lanyard or whatever, yeah. like their logo is everywhere so mm -hmm. it becomes very theatrical yeah and to me it doesn't say that you support queer people to me mm -hmm. it says okay you're all here so i'm gonna promote myself while i have you all here in one space yeah exactly and it's getting to the point for me and i feel like for a lot of other queer people where it doesn't feel genuine anymore and we can see right through it yeah you know yeah and <sighs> I do kind of want to talk about the type of advertisements ish that work for me and the type of things that I do believe. Yeah, are please positive. get into it. Because while I dislike that this is the way it has to be, but because of us living in a capitalist system, we <laughs> do rely on donations from huge companies that are making right. a lot of money mm -hmm. to donate to nonprofits like us so that we can do the work that we're doing and so right. that we can redistribute this wealth to uplift local queer artists to create that representation that we want to create and to mm -hmm. provide important services to marginalized queer people. You yeah. know, like that's something that's really important. And although I wish we just were more socialist and decided to fund things like this through like tax dollars that isn't the way that it is so i am gonna say the ways that i think it works <laughs> okay please do just i no i'm appreciate. intrigued because here's the thing here's the thing we're in this system mm -hmm. right we have to learn how to work within the system and change the things change things within the system but the the fact of the matter is that you know we're in it right yeah. so step by step mm -hmm. <laughs> so i definitely want to know your ideas on ways that these giant corporations can actually make a meaningful impact and mm. how certain advertising actually does resonate yeah. yeah yeah um i have i don't know how other people feel about this i would love to hear other people's opinions but i am going to say what kind of works for me i really really love when companies like one that i can think of that does this a lot is sephora they bring on like a local queer influencer like really interesting diverse group of people mm -hmm. and they will put out like billboards of this person and have like their at on it you oh. know what i mean and give them credit on the billboard i think that is a really great way of marketing to queer people because you are uplifting that person you're mm -hmm. using your reach your dollars to not only promote your brand but promote that person who is create and that is helping to create queer representation in yeah my mind. here's the thing is that brands they're gonna promote themselves no matter what like Duh. they're gonna do it of course like that's their motive they're brands mm -hmm. like they're gonna do it but when 
yeah, like what you just said. I actually had no idea that Sephora even did that. I guess a lot of companies do. Yeah, do makeup stuff, but yeah, um, yeah like if you're gonna promote your brand, mm. but you're also doing something really cool alongside of that, then mm. that to me is like okay, yeah, Sephora, you get the thumbs up mm-hmm. in that in that regard. Yeah. Totally, totally. And I will kind of reference this project that we're doing with Fizzy, which um, is open for registration until <laughs> June 14th, just to let you all know. So if you um, haven't applied, go apply. Yeah. Details will be linked in the description because there's a lot of them, but you can get five grand plus a ton of other stuff worth mm-hmm. up to $35,000. So quick plug right there. Yeah. But let's get back into it. But I will say that I I like the way that they've operated this program. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought it was really cool that they reached out to a small organization like us. I think that is a really excellent way of running your campaign. Actually reaching out to community organizations is really, really cool. Instead of just like throwing money at Pride. Like a huge, like love Pride. Pride is really great. But just throwing your money at it and slapping your logo all across it doesn't feel meaningful it's it's just like you did the bare like you did the laziest work Mm -hmm. you know yeah like versus like having you know we're not a a, a giant organization yet Mm -hmm. um so the fact that they even found us and was like you know we're gonna Mm -hmm. we're gonna work with you let's do this you're doing the grassroots work like that's sick and that's like that actually shows that you've put in some interest it shows that you've put in some some homework and and you Mm -hmm. actually have a genuine interest in it Mm -hmm. um so i completely agree with that but yeah yeah, just throwing your money Mm -hmm. at something and not even having you know the time Mm -hmm. to really think about what you're doing it's just the laziest move that you can make yeah and in my opinion does nothing for your brand other than I agree completely. like actually making yeah. us hate it more <laughs> yeah yeah but these are the specific things i liked about what they did and please tell me if y'all disagree because that's fair and square fair and square <laughs> yeah i liked that they worked with a small organization Mm -hmm. i really like that i like that they're giving us money for yes they made a donation for just to be transparent that we can now use to redistribute to actually compensate artists when they collaborate with us which feels really really fantastic for us like being able to actually pay people when they're collaborating with us is it feels really fulfilling so yeah i like that is really really meaningful yeah. to me and then the second thing is the fact that the program they're putting out is then gonna go to compensating queer artists and giving them something to create a project that they already wanted to create because yeah. i think a huge issue with so many companies is they want to ask queer creators BIPOC creators, people who are marginalized and really trying to put out their work and send their message, they want to reach out to them and ask these people, oh, if I pay you this money, will you come perform at my event? Will you do something for me that like right. benefits me? Instead, yeah. what we're doing with Fizzy is giving people money to just do you, you yeah. know, continue to work on your project. Like, yeah. I want to see you grow in the way that you want to grow. Exactly. And then two points of that. First of all, um, regarding like them collaborating with us and like us paying now being able to have the funds to do more of what we do Mm. is incredible because at the end of the day, you know, we live in the system. We need money to do everything that we want to do, basically. Right. Um, And the artists that we collaborate with also deserve compensation Completely. you know they put in all this work they've put in all this talent they're being vulnerable with us by sharing mm-hmm. their their songs with us they're you know they're being so generous by by collaborating to begin with mm-hmm. without initially being paid yeah. but now being able to pay them is mm-hmm. so fulfilling yeah because it just it really like it makes me feel like hey you're doing incredible. I want to see you go far. Here's my compensation to you this time because I honor you, the work that you're doing. I value it and I see, like, I just see you as the talented person that you are, yeah. right? So going to the bigger grants that that is happening with Fizzy, that also, I think, has the same language mm-hmm. of, like, 
you know, submit your project. Let's see what you got. And then from yeah. there, we're going to be like, whoever it is that we end up picking is, is just like, you're doing incredible work. I value you. I see your potential. Yeah. I see your talent. Here's, here's some money to make it happen. But it's like, you know, we're funding what you want to create, mm. not what we want you to create, which totally. I think is really special. Yeah. Um, again, you know, if you have any points on that or disagree, feel free to let us know in the comments. We're open to suggestions. Yeah, because obviously we're biased. Like, this is something that's, like, important to us. You know yeah, what I mean? Of course. It's, like, the first actual sponsorship that we've gotten on our own, and that is special to us. But, yeah. Yeah. So, I guess the reason that I, I wanted to disclaim that so hard as, like, being biased is because my point of view um, has shifted from going as just like a regular regular queer person at pride to now being someone who's running a community organization it's changed my viewpoint on it mm -hmm. you know because it, yeah like it sucks that we have to rely on corporations to do the work that we want to do and like to get compensated because like for years of us running queer collective we've been doing it for free and like doing it in our spare time but if a company yeah. is going to pay us and we can do this full time that's like it's unimaginable to me how much you can do if you could do this full time. Yeah, yeah. it's actually extremely empowering, which is, mm. I think, why we have both changed our viewpoints on it. Yeah. Is because at the end of the day, in this, you know, the society that we live in, money is obviously not everything, but it mm. is empowering to do what you truly want to do, right? Like when you're. Uh, an artist whether you're a dancer a painter a musician whatever mm. you know you're you still have to pay rent right and yeah. you still have to pay for say you're a singer you have to pay for the recording sessions like to make an album it's like a thousand dollars per song at least right yeah so that's a lot of money you know you're not gonna get there without it mm. and it's just something that's is part of our ecosystem and is part of like you know how we function as yeah. you know humans in a society so yeah to be able to have funds now to do more of what we love mm -hmm. and we were already doing it for free yeah uh, but if we can do this for free imagine how much more we can do when we have funds yeah totally totally and it's just it's funny to me though too because it felt really wrong to me as an artist myself being like I hate when people reach out to me and basically just tell me that this project's gonna pay you in like publicity or it's gonna pay you in oh yeah you know oh, what's the actual word people exposure. use exposure <laughs> exposure like, I'll pay you in exposure yeah. and yeah. you're like great my rent is 800 exposures a month so this is perfect <laughs> exactly but, yeah. and like that's how I felt because I was going from my own position as an artist and being like I don't want to be paid in exposures. Yeah, of <laughs> And then course. me going and reaching out to other artists and being like, hey, do you want to collaborate? Like, I'll pay you in exposures. It'll be good exposures for you. It's <laughs> <So, laughs> like, I don't want to do that to you. But then yeah. there's another piece, though, because we were talking to our roommate, Chantel, who is an artist herself, and she was living in Amsterdam, where it's obviously, like, more socialist there, and they actually, like, put more money into funding the arts. Uh -huh. So she values more so collaborating and just right. working with artists and like doing work like that yeah so she actually had an issue like when we were having this conversation with her she had an issue with the idea that you constantly have to be paying the artist mm. you know so it's like that potentially could hold you back from creating like a really grassroots community organized like community type event or type project because if one person mm -hmm. can't afford to compensate the other how can you do something here's the thing we do do this without mm -hmm. any payment and some artists do collaborate with us without any payment like yeah. that is still a thing and i think that the key and and why we're able to do it is because they know that we're small mm -hmm. and we know that they're small. I'm just small and cute. We're just little. Small, cute, and little. <laughs> <laughs> and they know that 
yeah. uh, this collaboration is mutually beneficial, right? Yeah, yeah. Like it will help them and it will help us. It's a mutually beneficial collaboration. And it's fun to co-create. And it's there fun to co-create. There. It's so yeah. it, like, I completely mm-hmm. agree with that. It is fun to co-create there doesn't always have to be money involved and i do agree with that there doesn't always have to be money involved in order to co-create with somebody Mm -hmm. especially if you're both like on board with the vision and it's both of like both of you are passionate about it yeah like there's no need to uh, involve money in that kind of a a Mm -hmm. transaction you know um i think that something key here is where you're coming from and your intentions as well Mm. say if we were a huge corporation and Mm. we're saying like let's co-create let's collaborate (laughs) you probably think that we're being sketchy and that we're being cheap and that we just don't want to pay you um because we do you know that we have the money we're a Mm. giant corporation you know like i think Mm. there's an element there too that really changes your view of a collaboration depending on who it's coming from yeah yeah totally and i think people know hopefully that if we could pay you during some sort of collaboration then we would yeah you know definitely like i definitely would be doing that and i have enjoyed and i try my best to make every single collaboration fulfilling for the other person and i try and ask people like how could this be more fulfilling for you yeah absolutely and you know, when it comes to money, like obviously money's great because mm. you can eat food with it and pay your rent with it and all the yeah. other stuff. Use it to survive. And you can make more art with it. But yeah. there's there's more than that. There's absolutely more than that. Like, you know, how's your relationship with that person that you're collaborating with? Yeah. Are you actually interested in what they do or are you just doing it like for clout or for more followers or like mm. exposure for yourself or whatever? You know, are you treating them like a friend? Are you treating them like, you know, a decent human being and creating a true relationship that isn't just about money? Yeah. Creating a relationship that you can, man, people, you, you, you really can see through the BS, Mm. you know, I think that people, you know, aren't given enough credit in general for seeing through the bs like if Mm. we were coming at you with disingenuous intentions i think that people would be able to see it yeah and they wouldn't collaborate with us because they're like no i can i can see the bs Mm -hmm. right through your eyes Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know yeah but there's a reason that people do collaborate with us there's a there's a reason why we make such amazing relationships with artists yeah. is because we truly do come from the place of we want to uplift you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in the past, it was very much like, hey, we don't have any money to mm-hmm. give you, but all of the skills that we have will give to you because we want to create something with you that will help you. you know? Yeah. And I think kind of tying this back into like rainbow baiting is that there's a difference when another artist reaches out to you or another community organization reaches out to you versus like a corporation reaching out to you. Yeah. You know, like there's a big yeah. difference there. Like I would expect more from a corporation than I would from a community organization or another artist. So some of you may be wondering why do companies care so much about like rainbow baiting, decorating their whole storefront with rainbows and doing all of this. Yeah. Um, It's because we have a lot of buying power, you know, like Mm. in comparison to a heterosexual couple, our age, a lot of us don't have children, which means more disposable income to spend you that's know? a good point. And I actually never thought of that. Yeah, no, it's actually like that's historically the reason. Like companies, it was a bit racist in the past. Like companies initially really just wanted to market towards like white gay men because they were still obviously in positions of power. They were more passing. They held very mm. like good jobs still. It was like safer for society. <laughs> they didn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't have... Um, any children to spend money on like they had right. so much disposable income and they like nice things mm. you know so they're a good group of people to market towards see. yeah <laughs> so wow. that's where the origins are in that um and obviously now like 
queer couples, obviously, we can have children as well. Yeah. But many of us choose not to. I don't know the statistics there on how many of us <laughs> have children now or not. But <laughs> yeah, like we're still a very powerful buying group. But I think we see overall a lot of companies mm-hmm. wanting to take a stance on social issues. Yeah. And dude, I think not just that. I think... Uh, yes queer people have a lot of buying power and Mm. there's more and more of us like realizing who we are and realizing that we're queer but not just that there's also very strong allies Mm, that can also see through the bs Mm. that also have a lot of buying power yeah and they're like no we're not gonna buy from you because this this and that like they combine the queer community with the the ally, ally community, like yeah. that's a lot of people. It totally and is. it's a lot of buying power. Yeah. Yeah. I see where you're coming from there. It's a Thank good you. point. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's just facts. That ain't where I'm coming from. It's just, just no facts. printer, yeah. just facts. Yeah, nice. But we we still see a lot of these major banks being the ones um supporting the queer community in, in that kind of way. Mm-hmm. But it's actually interesting. I can't remember the first bank that did it, but it was a bank who first chose to market to the queer community. Wasn't it Scotia Bank? Potentially. I don't I don't know which one it was, but they saw it as an opportunity because like I said, gay men had a lot of disposable income that they saw like an investment opportunity, like come put all your money with us, basically. Right, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. where it all started. Ah, that is a smart move. Yeah. It was a very smart move. Yeah, and since then, it's all history. Yeah, the rest yeah. is history. But hey, man, mm. hey, man, I'm talking to you, corporations. <laughs> all right? If you're going to just print a rainbow mm-hmm. and put it on your logo and do nothing else. How about don't? <laughs> how about just don't print the rainbow, okay? <laughs> just keep the rainbow away from your Instagram, from your physical mm-hmm. locations or wherever you may be. I will say it does feel kind of nice to be like walking through the mall or something when we used to be able to do that and being like surrounded <laughs> in rainbows and like getting on the bus and the bus is covered in rainbows, you know? Like part of me does like that and then I'm like, wait, what are they up to? <laughs> yeah, right, right. You know, I'm like, ooh, I'm so gay here. And then it's like, oh no, hold on. Am I am I falling victim to, to a scam? It, it works. <laughs> it yeah. works. That's why they keep doing it, is because it works and you are keep we falling a... victim to it. And we're like, oh my god, rainbows, I feel special. <laughs> Walking through like the yeah. mall or like the bus or like through Church Street. That's always rainbows. But yeah, um, yeah, and just it makes you feel special. It makes you feel like, oh my God, somebody cares. But then you fall to it because that's what mm-hmm. it's supposed to do. And then you feel like a big dummy. Yeah, it's yeah. okay. I've done it. Yeah. We've all done it. Yeah, We've all fallen is. for it. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Yeah. It, so I will say I like it. I just want to find a better way for them to do it. Yes. But I don't like. We still like, like the rainbows. Mm-hmm. Just FYI, rainbows are cute. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We still love the rainbows. We're just saying, if you're going to do the rainbow, like actually put some work into it. Don't just slap a rainbow. Be a good ally. Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me that I want to reiterate is like, don't take up space. Like you don't see me going into a BIPOC event, grabbing the microphone and like Mm. being the center of attention. Yeah. You know, that's not how you'd be an ally. Yeah. Like, you know, if there was like a a Black History Month parade, which would be kind of cool, you know, as a as non black people, we wouldn't be like, "Hey, I'm the guest of honor." <laughs> We're freaking here, and this is our logo. And then, yeah, it's a uh, Black History Month, but we're here, yeah, and buy our stuff, yeah. You know, so I'm honestly on board for taking corporations out of the out of pride. Yeah, what do you think? Like, I do recognize though that they are also a nonprofit that needs to put on this huge event for us, right? But I would like it if these corporations themselves took it upon themselves to still make their massive ass donation to Toronto Pride, Mm -hmm. but took themselves out of the parade. Yes. So, right. Rather than building a giant Mm -hmm. float that says corporation on it. (laughs) Corporation Inc. (laughs) Corporation Incorporated. (laughs) Inc. To the incorporates. And instead of doing that maybe like fund the float but have your logo just like off to the side or something and then you know like make creative things actually come to life rather than just like your shitty logo on stuff (laughs) no offense (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah that resonates
uh, on a last note, I just want to make this recommendation because I found it hilarious and mm-hmm. it kind of ties into what we're talking about today, which is Bo Burnham's special. Oh my God, please do. Yes. <laughs> what is it called? Inside. Yeah. So Bo Burnham's special Inside was just a true work of genius. That's a chef's kiss for anybody that's only listening. This is a chef's kiss. Yeah. Yes. It's a masterpiece. So he had a particular, the reason I'm talking about it here in this podcast is because he had a particular segment Mm. where he talked about this kind of a thing, not necessarily rainbow baiting, Mm. but just how companies just hop on the boat of like whatever issue is happening and they're like yes we've been on this the whole time it's like no you weren't no you weren't for example he has like a line in it i'm gonna paraphrase because i will not do it justice but you know for example he had a line in it of like the question is no longer will you buy wheat thins the question is will you support wheat thins in the fight against lyme disease (laughs) And so I'm like, good. what the hell does wheat thins have to do with Lyme disease? Yeah. But that's the point. That's yeah. the point that he's trying to make, you yeah. know? Yeah. It's like, man, don't. It's ridiculous. <laughs> huh? It's, and it's all just so that you buy more wheat thins. Like, yeah. what are we doing? Exactly. It doesn't make sense. So there's a way to do it. Corporations have a lot of money. There's a way to do it. There's a mm-hmm. way to give back. There's a way to make an impact without solely just saying buy more of our stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah, Totally completely yeah so that's where we're gonna leave you guys off today Mm -hmm. if you have a difference of opinion or if you have similar opinions or if you have half and half opinions let us know down in the comments below we want to hear from you we want to know what you think we want to know if you agree with us if you disagree with us if you're somewhere in between so with all of that being said make sure to subscribe Make sure to like the video if you're watching on YouTube and hit that notification bell because we put out these videos every single week and you do not want to miss them. Peace. Peace out. Bye.